Well, grace and peace be to you. We're hoping that this week um, the sound doesn't cut off and Annie Pickett doesn't have to spend the rest of her uh, Friday and Saturday trying to pick it up so that we could at least hear it a little bit. So we just want to, we're grateful for Annie for last week. Uh, so thank you very much, Annie. And, uh, and so it's just a little bit different, isn't it, um, to be at home uh, watching this, but let us just take our moment to remember the people in our church and to populate them in our mind. Because we do not worship alone. And our God is knows no time nor space. God knits us together and binds us together in the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this time knit us together one with another. And when we feel your prompt this next week, let us call each other or write to each other to make sure that those, the ties that bind us are strong and we may be uplifted and we may be the ones who uplift others. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Will you join me with, uh, for the call to worship? The word of God is planted in our hearts. Even in this time, may our hearts be receptive to the word. The love of God rains down on us. In this time, may our souls soak in the wonder of God's living word. In spite of everything, the breath of God blows softly within us. May our minds be stirred by the power of God's gentle spirit. Come, let us worship God together and celebrate the ties that bind us. Number 306. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne we pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims, our want, our comforts and our cares. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear and often for each other flows the sympathizing tear verse five from sorrow toil and pain and sin we shall be free and perfect love and friendship reign throughout eternity. The proof of God's amazing love is this, that while we were still sinners, 
Christ died for us in order that we might live. Because we have faith in Christ, we dare to approach God with the truth of our lives. So let us pray together the prayer of confession. Together, O oh God, have mercy on us according to your unwavering mercy and love. Mend our brokenness and the familiar burdens we carry. Instead, write on our hearts your love, your unfettered boundaries that set us free from that which we fear. Liberate us, God, to live the abundant life you have for each of us. Lord, we would see Jesus, love Jesus, follow Jesus, and serve Jesus, especially now. So let us take a few moments to offer our own prayers in the silence of our hearts. Scripture says, O Israel, hope in Yahweh God. My soul waits for Yahweh God more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us show each other a sign of that peace. So let's just imagine greeting one another throughout this time. It's a, it's a wondrous time. So let's think about all the people that we would be greeting right now. You can pause the worship service if you need to think about all those people, but I'm going to continue with reading Psalm 130. Listen for God's word. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Yahweh. Yahweh, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Yahweh God, should mark iniquities... O oh, Yahweh, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you might be revered. I wait for Yahweh God, my soul waits, and in God's word I hope. My soul waits for Yahweh God, more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O oh, Israel, hope in Yahweh God. For with God there is steadfast love, and with God there is great power to redeem. It is God who will redeem Israel from all her iniquities. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Tom. Second scripture comes to us from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 11. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and Martha. Martha was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, through Jesus, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world, but those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to awaken him. And the disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we might die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Judeans had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. And When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. <laughs> Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are the Messiah the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And when she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when Mary heard it, she got up quickly and went to Jesus. Now, Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Judeans who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. And they followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Judeans who came with her also weeping, 
he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus bawled. So the Jews said to him, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the, si the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, there's so much going on in our world, is there not? So much weirdness. Italian mayors going online to yell at their constituents for strolling or playing ping pong outside. People figuring out and posting how far four cases of toilet paper from Costco would last before that family of four ran out. My daughter in Denver, after a four-day search, was finally able to purchase individual rolls. Thanks be to God. We are on restrictions regarding our movements. No school or preschool, no going into work, no congregating. We are discovering new ways to work at home while having children at home who need to be schooled, plus all the usual housekeeping responsibilities. There's a mom who posted that she had been homeschooling her children for just about 90 minutes and wanted to pay all teachers about a billion dollars a year each. Simply, our lives have been disrupted. Our economy has been disrupted. Many people, especially in Italy, are dying from this disease. We are called to help flatten the curve in our own country. We know that most of us will con contact contract COVID-19, but we practice physical distancing so that our health care systems are not overwhelmed. Simply, we are being Presbyterians about this, proceeding decently and in order, slowing down the spread of this disease and allowing the doctors and nurses and researchers time, precious time, to figure out what to do medically for those stricken by COVID-19. The world can still learn from us Presbyterians. And we, we can still learn from Jesus. For you see, the greatest thing that Jesus brought to us was the news of, and he showed us a God who cares. Let's let that sink in for a moment. The greatest thing that Jesus did was to show us 
a God who cares. Now I'm asking each of us to read this scripture once a day for the next week. And notice what words or phrases pop up. I'm not asking us to wrap our minds around this passage, although we do have brains and are meant to use them. What I'm asking is that when we daily read this passage from John 11 out loud, and maybe even to each other, to, we are to allow the richness of this passage to wrap itself around our hearts. What might we hear? What might we be led to do? So here are some of the insights that I have had as I've allowed this passage to wash over me. You might want to open your Bibles to this passage and follow along. I'm not to, going to comment on everything. You will have your own insights, but this is what's occurred to me. First of all, the name Lazarus in Hebrew means God has helped. Isn't that interesting? Lazarus means God has helped. Second, Jesus had a safe place to go. Isn't that amazing? We all have our safe places to go these days, right? But Jesus had his, and it was in the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus because they were good friends, friends that he loved. It's a place of understanding and peace and love. The one who had no home could find rest from the tensions of life in this house. Third, two dear friends of Jesus send a message concerning another friend. And we can always go to Jesus with whatever problem we are facing, as the old hymn says, and he walks with me and he talks with me. But we can also bring the needs of our friends of our world to Jesus. Four, and this is kind of hard, God does not spare those whom God loves from life's difficulties. Or as James Finley, Finley has said, God protects us from nothing, but sustains us in everything. God protects us from nothing, but sustains us in everything. Five, why does Jesus tarry? So often we would like Jesus to do things in our time and in our way. But the lesson here is that we must learn to allow him to do them in his own time and in his own way. That has been the point of the film, The Shack, we have watched during our Lenten soup suppers. It is not our place to judge. It is our place to have faith in God and to love others. The phrase, are there not 12 hours in a day, caught my attention. And I thought, in God's economy, each person has a day. And there is enough time to do what needs to be done. There's no need to rush. However, there are only 12 hours in each day, so use them wisely, consciously. There is no room for waste. Seven, no matter how we read what Thomas says in verse 16, at least he wants to accompany Jesus and he invites others to do the same. No matter how frightened we might be, and that's how I read what Thomas is saying there, no matter how frightened we might be, we are still to follow Jesus. Eight. John Reith once said, I do not like crises, crises, but I like the opportunities which they supply. What opportunities to practice our faith might we have during this crisis? Ten, 
our faith becomes, it becomes by doing, by following Jesus. Eleven. Watch how Martha in verse 21 speaks her mind. It's amazing, is it not? She is so honest with Jesus. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Right? How we can be honest with Jesus. But even though, even now, whatever you ask of God, God will do it. And then she shows her faith. More faith than her sister Mary has. Thirteen. Christian existence in Christ is life before death. Ponder that quote. We are not on our way to death, but on our way to life. When Jesus comes into Mary and Martha's life with Lazarus dead, he comes to bring life. And now for Mary. And this is the moment for me in this scripture passage. Don't miss it as you're reading it this week. The teacher is here and he is calling for you. Wow. The teacher is here and he's calling for you. Here's the moment, the movement of grace in this passage. We may think we're the ones searching for the teacher, for Jesus. However, the teacher is here and already calling for us. And when we rise up, it's the same verb as resurrection that Jesus has, by the way, as Mary rises up. And when we rise up and come to Jesus, others will follow. Fifteen. Jesus is deeply moved twice in this passage. Jesus shows us a God who cares. First, he bawls. It's a better translation, translation than wept, apparently. And then again, a groan, a groan emanates from him when he arrives at the tomb. Here Jesus is very human, entering into our own pain, feeling deeply our pain. Anguish and tears spew forth from Jesus. Can you imagine how he's feeling right now? How we're feeling right now? With people all over the world being stricken by COVID-19 and the violence in our world still happening. 16, and then there's the roar that is heard around the world, as Dale Bruner has written. He's written, an immovable object meets in an irresistible force. Death meets Christ. The good shepherd calls his sheep by name, remember? And Jesus commands Jesus' own word in response to God's answer to prayer defeats death. Wow. And if you're counting, that's the second wow I've had. Finally, notice that it's not Jesus who unbinds this man, but Jesus asks the ones around him to unbind Lazarus. It is the church's call to help out wherever Jesus has been at work. So rich this passage is, is it not? That's why I'm asking you to read it this week, once a day, just to see what God has in store for you, what, God, what, what word God might have for you for that day, or what phrase, or what catches your attention. Because you see, the Bible is not a, a, a dead instrument. It is enlivened by the Holy Spirit whenever we pick it up and read it. And it teaches us whenever we put time and effort into it. So there's so much more. 
So let it unfold this week. What did you see from this list? What struck you? And how does this help you grow in your faith? Because that's what a sermon is supposed to do. It's supposed to help each of us, and me as well, grow in our faith. For me, as I lift up in prayer the folks that are affected by this COVID-19 pandemic and this still violent world of ours, here's what I heard today. God does not spare those whom God loves from God's difficulty, from life's difficulties. God does not spare those whom God loves from life's difficulties. It is not our place to judge. It is our place to have faith in God and to love others. The teacher is here and calling for you. We are raised up to be our best selves, our true selves, compassionate, kind, and generous. The Good Shepherd calls each sheep by name. Lazarus. Jesus calls Lazarus by name and calls each one of us by name. Jesus, the Word of God, defeats death. When we are in Jesus, we are both realistic and other-focused. We love ourselves and our families and our friends and our neighbors, both near and far, including those who we think stink like they have been dead for four days. There is no one, no one, who is separated from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, they think they may be separated. They may act as if they are separated. But they are not. So let us unbind the ones who are bound and let them go free. For they, like us, have been marked by Jesus forever. Let us pray. Lord, this is an incredible story that is in front of us. So help us, Lord, drink deeply from this story. Help us find the, the nuggets that you would have us find and help them wrap themselves around our hearts, not in death cloths, but in ways that are light and are liberating and cause us to be curious about what you would have us see and do and be. Open our eyes. <laughs> Open our hearts in prayer. Be with us now and in the days to come. In the name of Jesus we pray and that the people say, Amen. We've printed in the uh, bulletin a prayer for the pandemic, and I'd like you to join me in praying this. All right? You ready? Together. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those who have no safe place to go. We who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home, remember those who have no home. 
Remember those who have, uh, as fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen and amen. Now, let us take up our morning offering. And I know that this is going to be virtual, but let us offer ourselves and our prayers and our hands and our concerns, as well as remember to send in um, your contributions to the church. Um, Carol and I and um, Diane are, are all working still. So, let us hear. Let us take up our morning offering. God from whom all blessings flow. Please stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Gracious God, receive these gifts as an expression of our desire to proclaim the gospel of Christ both here and around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I haven't heard of anybody that might be sick from COVID-19 yet, so if you uh, hear of anybody, please give me a call on my cell phone, or you can email me, or just call the church, um, because we want to lift these people up in prayer. So let us join our hearts in prayer this morning. Lord, we think of all the people that are um, in the path of COVID-19, who are suffering already, uh, people in far-flung places on this planet, in China and in South Korea, in Italy, in, other, in Iran, and other places that are having outbreaks. Please protect the vulnerable, the people who are in refugee camps or who are in prisons or jails or in detention whatever way, in nursing homes, assisted living places, wherever people are congregated in small spaces, Lord, we lift them up to you. Because we are friends of yours. And Lord, we also remember the people, our servicemen and women around the country, around the world. We pray for our first responders, for the police officers and firefighters and EMTs. We pray for all teachers who are scrambling to help kids learn. We lift them up, Lord, because this is a crazy, crazy time to try to figure out distance learning. And there are going to be some children who, of course, do not have the infrastructure in their own homes. 
So help them figure out how they can learn. Lord, we also lift up medical personnel and as they're doing the best they can with what they know at this time. And all researchers that are struggling to crack this genome and figure out what we can do in order to at least um, cut down on the symptoms, uh, make them less severe, but also figure out maybe even some sort of cure. You know incredible, intelligent people are working all around the world to do this, Lord. And we thank you that you have given them the brains and the expertise for this. We pray as well for the people that are grocery workers or in the supply chain for food or our farmers um, that supply us food. And we ask you to continue to safeguard them. And there's so many other people that we bring to mind, Lord. Our friends and our family. People that we've heard of. People that we haven't. People who have asked us to pray for them. And we give you their names now. Lord, we walk by faith and not by sight. You do not protect us from this thing, but you will sustain us. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray the prayer that he taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join in singing hymn number 817, We Walk by Faith and Not by Sight. You can find that online, I'm sure, at some point. Um, okay. by faith and not by sight, though others go to fear, O Christ who spoke as none e'er spoke, my peace be with you here. We may not touch your hands and side, nor follow where you trod, but in your promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God. Help then, O oh Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. And when our life of faith is done in realms of clearer light, may we behold you as you are with full and endless sight. Amen. I, um, I found this quote from The Lord of the Rings. It's from Frodo. Frodo says, I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish none of this had happened. And Gandalf says, 
So do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Jesus calls us. The teacher is here and is calling to us. So may the blessing of Almighty God, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit remain with us now and always. Amen.